six star. <laughs> so good. Poof. Homemade bread, homemade cheese, homemade prosciutto, homegrown tomatoes, eggs from the farm. Maybe the best breakfast I've ever had. No kidding, when I was done, my plate looked like I licked it. It was like a brand new plate. That was so good. Poof. Okay, let's keep going. So the trip today will cover about 450 kilometers, which on an open highway is like four hours. But considering we're going through the mountains and we're making all the stops along the way, it should be 11 or 12 hour trip. Long day. Let's do it. Our first main attraction of the day, the Tara River. Incredibly beautiful. You can see the green turquoise color water flowing through the second deepest canyon in the world. Wow. And in fact, the deepest canyon in Europe. Wow. And according to our tour guide, the most beautiful canyon in the world. Wow. Wow. So really nice. There's actually a zip line here if you look closely. Ooh, There's so people. Cool. Zipping along, looks pretty exciting. Uh, we were told 20 euros a person for the zip line. We're gonna skip it. We're gonna walk along this bridge, which is uh, super beautiful, some great viewpoints. And this is not the main attraction of the day. Mm -hmm. Coming up soon, we'll be at the Black River. Our tour guide is being clear. Let's go as quick as we can here to spend more time at the Black River. Stay tuned for that. But uh, pretty nice. I mean, yeah, come on. This is like a little slice of heaven here. Look at this bridge though, very cool. Yeah. Super long bridge. <laughs> Evidently, when it was built, it was winning some world records for the longest wooden bridge in the world. Wow. Hundreds of years ago. Amazing. But now it's all safe and concrete and everything. Very all right. Cool. Next stop, the Black River. Before the Black Lake, we're buying a local specialty black honey. Wow. So Why is it black? Evidently, it tastes quite different. It's from uh, 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 something with a pine, pine tree. Pine, yeah, pine, pine tree, tree honey. Uh, beehive, yeah. Nice. So evidently it tastes quite different. It might be hard to eat right now. We need to get some bread or something. So maybe mm -hmm. at the end of the video when we're back home, we'll try it. Okay. But uh, 10 euros for a jar of black honey. Oh, On our nice. way to the Look black lake. You can see it's black. Looks a bit like oil. Yeah, very nice. All right. There you have it. Okay, next stop, black lake. All right, we are about a 10 minute walk from the van or the parking lot. We are now in Dormitor National Park and we are just walking up on Black Lake. Check this out, guys. Wow. Whew. This is the kind of lake that makes you want to go swimming. Let's go. Tell you what, one of the most beautiful places in all of Montenegro for me. Obviously, Kotor Bay is one of the best, but this lake is incredible and it's so big, it was actually hard to get the whole lake on the drone. I had to fly like uh, 700 meters away to get the whole lake. So picturesque and refreshing, and now it's time to talk Ivana to swimming. Awesome. Yeah, here she comes. You tell me if it's cold. It's refreshing. Jump, 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 jump. Run, slash, go. Hiya! <laughs> Good job, Ivana. What a swim. Absolutely refreshing. I'm a little confused as to why they call it Black Lake. Looks turquoise to me. 
Uh, that being said, the name Montenegro means Black Mountain because of the dense forest. Mm -hmm. It looks kind of black, although it's like a dark green. Yes, from um, far away it looks black. Maybe we can ask our tour guide why they called it Black Lake. I will say you can rent a kayak or a boat, a canoe, and kind of go out there. Yeah. Looks like a good option. Really, really nice. One so, of my favorites in all of Montenegro. There's this bigger lake and a smaller lake behind this one. And from up above, it looks like two blue eyes. Two blue eyes. Yeah, a pair of blue eyes. That's what I'm at. Oh, I wonder if we. <laughs> I wonder if we saw the other lake with a drone. Maybe it's too far to see. Oh, maybe. Because this lake here is so big, I could barely see it on the drone. Right, right, right. Super massive. It reminds me of Canada, really, a little bit. Because of the pine a trees. Bit. Yeah, pine trees, blue lake, and mountains. Really Ooh. nice. Really, really Beautiful. nice. Beautiful. Uh, great place for a picnic. Yeah. That amazing. being said, we're on a tour group, so instead of a picnic, we're going for a nice fancy lunch. Ooh. So let's go eat. Let's go. Fry thief. <laughs> All right, lunchtime, but as a pre meal, we're going to go for this homemade black honey, Ooh. which looks uh, <laughs> interesting. Gonna go ahead and eat it with a fork. It looks almost gold. Wow, it's very thick, isn't it? Whoa. Is it good? Whoa. It's different. Doesn't taste like honey at all. Oh. Doesn't taste like honey at all. Tastes like licorice. Really? Let me try. Tastes like licorice. Look here, look here. Black licorice. This is all natural high quality homemade honey from a pine tree. Somehow they got the pine sap in the honey. Try one. <laughs> Tastes like black licorice. Quite nice. Yeah, it tastes like a mix of honey and licorice. Mm. I don't know if I like it. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Interesting though. It might be it might be an acquired taste that we have to acquire. Mm -hmm. For ten euros, uh, I should have got the small jar. I think that was the. How much was the small one? Uh, I think it was five euros. <laughs> you should have got. Should have got the small, got one. The small one. Still good. Anyway, all right, time for lunch. <laughs> all right, I wasn't able to clean my plate as good as this morning, but I did my best. I will say I cannot believe it's already three thirty. Like I said this morning, we're only going to travel 450 kilometers today, but because the roads are all serpentine through the mountains, it's been a slow day of travel. What's really good is in the bus, the tour guide, Luca, has a microphone and it goes through the speakers and he's really done a good job of keeping us uh, engaged with history and comedy and all sorts of um, interesting facts about the north, for instance. Because of the landscape in the north, with all the different kind of valleys and then ridge lines and canyons and rivers, there was a real tribal setup for hundreds of years in northern Montenegro. And some of the ancient tribal beliefs are still um, existing today. For instance, if you're a young guy in northern Montenegro and you're 20 or 22 and you fall in love with some girl and you tell your parents, I found the love of my life, I'm going to ask her to marry me, they might say, what's her last name? You would tell your parents her last name and your parents might say, you can't talk to her anymore. That's a different tribe. And 200 years ago, the tribe did something bad to us. And so, uh, not allowed, you know? Obviously, no hatred in their heart. Just a funny story. But um, interesting because of the, you know, landscape of how one hospitable area was here, then a huge mountain range and another one. So the tribes were all sort of divided. Very interesting stuff. Um, we have one more main stop before we're done the tour. So three big stops today, really. Yeah. The uh, canyon the lake, which was incredible, and next up, the monastery, yeah. okay. which should be historical and really great. Let's go. So, let's go. All right, a quick pit stop at a viewpoint, which provides a pretty incredible view overlooking the entire valley. And on the flip side of the viewpoint, on the back, we can see St. Vassal's Orthodox Monastery way up in the mountains. So we've made the drive up here and we're actually in front of it now. The thing is, obviously Saint Vessel has been sainted in the Orthodox religion. So this is a super important place. So important that they've built all of these kind of living quarters beside it where people who make the pilgrimage to this monastery will um, spend 
the week or the night or however long they're staying for. You can see on the ground there's tons of people with pillows and blankets who have made the pilgrimage here and are just at the holy site of St. Vassal's Orthodox Monastery. So here's the monastery behind me. It's got an incredible story as to how it got there and why it's so up high in the mountains and um, how St. Vassal got sainted and all the miracles that happen happened. But uh, let's go in there first. I'm imagining I won't be able to film much in there, which is okay. Um, we're gonna go through first maybe, Ivana, and then we'll come back and tell all the stories, say the things we saw. But uh, pretty incredible place. Everybody's uh, looking serious and looking uh, profound and uh, kind of incredible. Okay, next stop, St. Vassal's Orthodox Monastery. All right, and we're back just where we started a few minutes ago. We just went through the entire monastery, I guess. Big signs everywhere saying no cell phones, no photos, no cameras. To be clear, everyone inside is taking photos of each other. I guess breaking the rule, but I think they're taking like personal photos for personal use. They're not taking videos and they're certainly not taking videos like we're gonna do to put them on YouTube. So we got exactly zero clips. We follow the rules. Um, but the monastery itself is pretty incredible. So they do have St. Vassal's remains and many people are going there, quite a lineup. People are praying, Orthodox people, um, very solemn and somber and very sort of respectful, quiet room. I'm not orthodox, but I can feel the energy in there. It's just incredible. Like, I can see some people, it would bring tears into their eyes, but the energy there was just, wow. Cannot describe. Wow. Wow. Good for you, Ivana. Mm -hmm. And so after we went to the remains, we did go all the way up the top of the bell tower, which offers a really good view over the valley as well as is full of really incredible um, like mosaics with tiles of all the different orthodox symbols Jesus and tons of biblical stuff really really beautiful and again tons of people are praying and walking around and sort of appreciating the monastery now how did this monastery get here and why is it so high up in the mountains so as the story goes um, Vassal uh, before sainthood took a three-day barefoot pilgrimage he left in a part of bosnia and he ended up here he was looking for a place to worship and live a life of prayer to his orthodox religion he bumped into another monk around here and they decided up here way up in the mountains was the right location because at the time it was the early 17th century so it was the early 1600s and um the Ottoman Empire was ruling and they did not allow construction of new religious buildings and in fact they were destroying some of the old religious buildings so they figured up here maybe the Ottomans won't notice and if they did notice maybe they could be easy to defend from up in this uh, high vantage point. Now um, obviously he built a huge monastery. It wasn't this big. It was much smaller in the 1600s but he built a huge monastery and had many monks and a big following. And it's my understanding, in order to get sainted into the Orthodox religion, or to in any branch, um, any religion really, you have to um, have miracles. There's like a requirement of these miracles to kind of earn your sainthood. And so it's interesting that there's actually a logbook of everyone who's been here online, and there's a separate logbook of everyone who's been here and experienced a miracle. So there's like thousands and thousands of miracles that have happened here. The earliest one would be after Saint Vasil died, um, some monks that were here, um, they had these dreams about him still being alive and they didn't know what it meant so they decided to open his casket and many many years after St. Basil died they opened his casket and his remains were perfectly preserved not decomposed at all which is a sign of sainthood because saints don't decompose they're holy and they cannot uh, decompose so this was sort of the beginning of the process of him getting sainthood but I will say um, even Ivana said she felt the energy. It's a really amazing place. I wish I could get some videos in there for you guys. I'm sure I could have snuck some, but I just didn't feel comfortable with the whole um, sainthood in this, you know, 400 year old monastery way up in the rocks. It's sort of a sign of like um, resistance to oppression because of the way it was kind of done under the Ottoman Empire. And it's also obviously a sign of incredible faith um, Vassal's three-day barefoot journey and his decision to turn what was originally just a cave into this monastery. So he sort of um, lived the life of a saint. He was rewarded with sainthood and now thousands and thousands of Orthodox people 
uh, come here every year on their own pilgrimage. Um, and you can see they've built all of this stuff beside it, which are like living quarters and places to um, spend the night if you are in fact pilgrimage, taking a pilgrimage here with your family. There's a bunch of people on the uh, ground on blankets mm -hmm. and on uh, pillows. And uh, it's just a huge symbol of faith. We love doing stuff like this. Obviously, we're not Orthodox, but whether it's Muslim or Orthodox or any of the religions, Buddhism, Hindu, it's nice to go to these places. And the people are so welcoming. Um, most people here are Orthodox, and there's a few tourists like us. And uh, yeah. no one's giving us a hard time, our dirty looks. And they're just kind of appreciating it with us. And so there you have it, guys. Thanks for watching our vlog today. Wow. What was your favorite party, Ivana? Actually, if you Favorite's want, part. speak more about what you were, what, what you were saying in the... Uh, the remains of St. Basil's room there. You said you felt something overcome you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the energy, it, it's a small room. It's a very tiny room where people go in one by one and then see the casket and the body, but it was covered in a fabric, a holy fa fabric. And in that little room, the energy is just so, I don't, I cannot describe it. It's just, amazing wow right i made a little prayer even though i'm not orthodox and hopefully it will come true miracle happens there so yeah wow. it's funny because her name is ivana which is a very common name in serbia and and russia which are both orthodox countries mm -hmm. uh, or have a large orthodox population yeah, I, I think should say. orthodox and there are some similarities between orthodox and catholic i i was raised catholic so I felt a little bit of something there. Good for you. You know? Yeah, and the room you're talking about was actually, I think it's still a cave. I think the walls mm -hmm. were just uh, the walls of the stone. Sort of an original uh, uh, Yeah, it's amazing. Cave. You can see uh, paintings and mosaics on the on the on the rocks of the cave it's just it's really special a, a beautiful a beautiful was really special place even if you're not orthodox if you are yeah. in montenegro come here you must see it for yourself is a, a, a miracle place to be honest with you yeah. and this is my favorite part of the day i mean the whole day has been I would great agree. even the lake the lake reminded me of home in canada the mountains the it was beautiful but this monastery is my favorite part of the day. Everything totally agree. Today has been great. Lots of driving, lots of time we spent on the road. In the bus, but yeah. Every single spot that we went to, it's been worth it. So agree. Special thanks to our guide, Luca. Luca. Yeah. He knows so much about the history, about the geography of Montenegro. He explained everything so well. His English was just. Uh, really, really perfect. So, Luca from Monte, from 360, 360 Monte. Monte. Got it. Uh, do this tour, guys. Really do the it's tour. It's the Northern Montenegro tour. Yeah, so. was a really nice uh, way to end the tour. Yeah, I think this spot actually is my favorite spot of all Montenegro, and this is my favorite tour out of all the tours that we did. Wow. Yeah. There you have it, guys. I love it. All right, thanks for watching our video. Yeah. Now we will transition to the outro, where we will probably be acting silly, which is a bit of a transition <laughs> from this moment to the next thing you'll see in the video. But there you have it, guys. Love you thanks guys. for watching. Bye. Bye. The problem with the honey is, uh, because it tastes like licorice, I'm not convinced we can put it in the coffee. Right? Try. Like rich coffee? Sure. Maybe. Because I don't know how I was going to eat it. It doesn't taste very yummy. <laughs> but on its own. I mean, it tastes okay. The licorice, the licorice taste is not so bad, but it's just honey flavor is better, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we'll finish it. Somehow, one way or another, we'll finish it. Uh -huh. Maybe it'll be licorice coffee. <laughs> I don't mind it. It's worth a try.